Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Our program will begin in just a moment. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Our program will begin in just a moment. Good day. Welcome to Advocacy Anywhere, powered by American Jewish Committee. Advocacy Anywhere is AJC's digital platform that enables you to engage with AJC's global expertise, content, and advocacy from wherever you are. Today's program is being presented in cooperation with AJC's Alexander Young Leadership Department as part of AJC's Back to School Week, a new initiative to equip students for what's expected to be one of the most challenging semesters on campus for young American Jews. And joining us today to share their perspectives are Michal Cohen, a senior at American University and the Chief Marketing Officer at Jewish on Campus, and Leon Co Cohen, a high school senior in Atlanta and alumnus of Leader AJC's Leaders for Tomorrow program. Moderating today's conversation is Joanna lieberman Sneer, AJC Director of Leadership Development and Board Engagement and Director of the Leaders for Tomorrow program. After we hear from our guests, time permitting, we will take your questions. You may email your question to questions at ajc.org, questions is plural, or use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Joanna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, or this afternoon. We are so privileged to be joined by these two talented students. So let's dive into our conversation. Um, Michal, we're going to start with you. Michal, you recently penned a really powerful letter to your freshman self in which you point poignantly wrote, there are those who complain and do nothing and those who complain and do something. So tell us, what is the Jewish student experience like on your campus and how and why did you end up getting involved in Jewish activism in particular while you've been on campus? Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's really full circle because I was an intern for AJC not long ago um, and I was on the other side of the, the webinar. Um, my, that, this sentence is something that my dad constantly tells me, um, and it's something that I take with me everywhere I go. And it's something that I think a lot of Jew, most Jewish students internalize, whether they know it or not today on college campuses, because we've been put in a corner where we are not widely accepted on campus. Um, we have to fight, you know kind of to be here um, and to be accepted by the Jewish um, student body. Um, and being able to say, you know, this is not fair. Um, why is this happening? And then also, you know, this drive kicks in of, okay, let's do something about it. Let's not just complain about it. And I think that is why Jewish on Campus started because we saw that there's this lack of understanding of college anti-Semitism and how it manifests. And instead of just letting it happen and letting it fester and become worse, we said, no, let, let's actually do something about it. And that really materialized last year when we saw this rise of anti-Semitism as COVID started. Um, and a lot of a lot of students not knowing what to do and not really knowing the resources and who to go to. So we said, instead of you know waiting for someone else to do something, let's do something because we know it best. And that's really how I started with Jewish on Campus. I was scared. I felt lonely. I felt isolated from my student body. And my dad reminded me of this quote that he always says. And then. I saw my colleague, Julia Jassy and Isaac DeCastro start Jewish on Campus. And I said, I need to be a part of this. And then the rest is kind of history. And, and such an inspiration that you've provided other students with a voice to be able to speak up and to take action like that quote so perfectly highlights. Um, Leon, let's turn to you. So as our resident high schooler in our conversation today, when did you start thinking about Jewish advocacy and how did it become such an important issue for you to engage in, especially at such a young age? So about a year before my bar mitzvah, I sort of hit the transition from a kid to becoming a young adult, which I am now. Um, and Jew Jewish advocacy is really important to me because it's who I am. 
Um, it's the kid who walks around my high school with a Jewish star on his neck, uh, who gets asked the questions, why am I gonna miss school on Tuesday? Um, and seeing things and hearing things um, from my peers that affect me as a person and as a Jew um, and who I am in their environment. Um, and so that I'm equal uh, with everybody. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I want to I want to really dive into the substance and, and Michal, you started to touch upon some of these challenges. But what I really um, what what I'd be interested in hearing from you is in your experience, what do challenges what do these challenges really look like as students, both as it pertains to anti-Semitism and also as it pertains to anti-Israel sentiments? And um, Michal, here, let's start with you. Sure. So starting off with the anti-Israel sentiment, I am a first generation Israeli American. My first name is Michal, which is not a very Jewish name, but it's a very Israeli name. And that is something that I can't hide it on the roster. It's very apparent. And I always get the question, well, first my professors always call me Michael Cohen. And then we have the conversation, no, it's actually Michal. And then there's a five minute conversation on how to even pronounce it. And then the conversation shifts to, oh, where are you from? And then Israel gets brought up, gets brought up, and then there's always that really awkward silence of, oh, okay. Um, and so instead of you know celebrating, oh, that's so cool, there's always that awkward silence or you know quietly shifting the conversation to somewhere else because everyone just doesn't want to talk about it and then getting those stares from different students oh she's that israeli kid um, or even now on campus um, over the summer i was really loud on social media during the escalation between hamas and israel and as i walked through campus i get like stares and people look at me like as i'm sitting um, like on the quad or like in a building, like people either come up to me and say, oh, I recognize you, like, thank you for your work, or I get like really dirty looks. Um, and it's something, it's like those small things where even just talking about my lived experiences as an Israeli or how my family had to go to bomb shelters because, you know, of a rocket, side, of a rocket um, attack, like, that isn't normal. That is just me as an Israeli. Like I cannot be proud of where I come from, my family, uh, my history being, you know, having lived experiences in Israel. Uh, in Israel. Um, and, and shifting to the conversations about anti-Semitism, it can be everything from students just not knowing so one of my first interactions when I was a freshman, um, um, one of my friends asked me, oh, you're Jewish. Do you want to come to the bank with me? Because I heard Jews were good with money. Like that is an outrageous statement, but it's um, she didn't even realize that what she said was problematic because there's such a lack of education around Jewish identity, Jew Jewish stereotypes, anti-Semitism. And it can even go into like the more administrative side where my sophomore year, I am a one Orthodox Jew. So I take off for the holidays and I, I don't do work. So I'm off my phone for Shabbat for the holidays. And I go to my on campus, I have an on campus job. And I went to my supervisor and I told him, these are the dates I need to leave. He said, okay, find coverage. So I was looking and I couldn't get anything. And he said, okay, like, we'll just deal with the consequences. And I said, no, like I'm, I'm leaving for Yom Kippur, like one of the holiest days in the Jewish calendar. Didn't want to hear the, like the end of it. He just did not care. And then I had to go to HR um, like two days before I was leaving in order to get it resolved. But it's, it's really like, there's this huge spec spectrum from, you know, that Jew Jewish students are dealing with, whether it's like interactions or from an administrative point of view where we literally have to fight just to get off for holidays or when a you know, professor says like in a remark about Israel, which you know doesn't make any sense or like, why are you even saying that? Um, so there's a really like broad spectrum of instances that Jewish students are dealing with. Thank you, Michan. Leanne, I wanna give you an opportunity to answer this question, but first I just wanna reflect and pause 
for a moment. It, you both have spoken already about how um, you are public with your pride in your Jewish identity. And I think that that's something to really pick up on um, and to, to celebrate and to applaud both of you. And, you know, before our public conversation here started, we were talking about the fact that you both have um, Israeli flags on the walls behind you in your Zoom box. Um, and I wonder if you can speak, like, what does that mean to you? It, you know, for both of you, it sounded like there was a story there. Like, what does that mean to you to have this Israeli flag on the wall behind you every time you're on Zoom? Well, for me, Leon, go ahead. Sorry, for me in particular, um, it makes me very proud. Every day when I wake up, um, when I come back from school, I see the Israeli flag. I see who I am, um, and I love it. I love to see it all the time, and um, I love to share my Israel pride uh, with the people around me. So it's really important to me, and um, yeah. For me, yeah. That I mean. I'm Israeli, like this is my heritage. Uh, I have memories from Israel, um, some good, some not, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and I, it shapes me to who I am today. It's a lot of my chutzpah comes from that. Um, be being a loud Jew on the internet comes from that. Like being an Israeli, um, my, you know, being a first, the oldest, child to two Israeli immigrants. That's my lived experience. This flag represents my lived experience, who I am as a person before everything else. Like I am Michal Cohen, loud, proud Israeli Jew. Um, and that just this flag encompasses all of that. Great. So, so inspiring, both of you. Um, Leanne, I wanna go to the, back to the question about challenges. So can you help us to understand on your high school campus, what do challenges look like both as it pertains to anti-Semitism and also anti-Israel sentiment? So most recently, the anti-Israel sentiment at my school is really strong this spring um, from the latest conflict of Israel and Hamas. Um, I, I posted um, lots of factual information about the conflict um, uh, while it was happening. And I was blocked from my uh, school's Muslim student union. Um, I was unfollowed and sent ugly messages um, from Muslim students and very liberal students at my school um, who held either um, or believed false narratives or thought that, oh, because I posted this, I believe this, and therefore I don't think this, this, and this. Um, and they weren't okay with that. They weren't okay with me expressing who I am um, and what I believe. Um, and for the anti-Semitism on my campus, um, I've seen it in my high school, in my middle school, anything from swastikas being carved into the mirrors of the bathrooms to people uh, walking down the hallways and putting up Nazi salutes. Um, there, it's continuous. Uh, we can't go by where I don't see or hear something that uh, makes me uncomfortable. So, um, yeah. There are lived experiences uh, for both anti-Semitism and anti-Israel rhetoric that I see daily. Leon, you, you started to mention this, but I wanna just go a layer deeper on it. So um, you mentioned Hamas. Um, we're now almost four months removed from the Hamas-induced violence in Israel. And I'm wondering how did this conflict change the discourse surrounding Israel and Judaism on your campuses, in your online communities, and elsewhere? Um, so, Leon, why don't we start with you if you want to build on that a little bit, and then we'll go to Michal. Yeah, so um, this week is my elections for student government, and I am running for a position in my senior class. Um, it makes me approach groups and students a little differently. Um, obviously, people know where I stand politically. Um, and the student government's job is not uh, really a political function. It's to make sure everybody can participate in school activities. And it does make me think twice about um, the students I'm asking for their vote or signing my petition. Um, yeah, it, it, it brings, a, it adds a level of, of being uncomfortable um, around some students, but I am not afraid of being who I am and saying what I believe uh, because it's who I am and I have to be who I am. And if I'm not who I am, I'm nothing, so. 
Um, powerful statement. Thank you, Leanne. Michal. Yeah, so it's interesting because I was very loud on the internet <laughs> over the summer. <laughs> And all of a sudden I can rec I go to a pretty small university. It's not a large state school. And so I see kind of the same people uh, every day. And I can point out people that have said really disgusting things <laughs> to me on the internet. So I'm like, oh, wait, now like I see you in person, we're not online. So that layer of protection in a sense has been removed um, where, Honest, like at the end of the day, like all bets are off. Where in the sense, like before they didn't really know where I lived, there was the screen, but now they just see me on the quad. Like what, what stops them from coming up to me and doing anything from spitting on me, uh, you know, physically trying to assault me or say something to my face in front of, you know, thousands of other students. So that, in a sense, for me, has changed because all of a sudden I feel a lot, I am more vulnerable. And I know a lot of other Jewish students feel the same way where before, I mean, I think online space has been a horrible place for Jewish students because, I mean, we're constantly sent, being sent, um, you know, threats, anything from death to rape. I mean, I've gotten my plenty of death and rape threats but now because as we're starting to transition to like being back in person there isn't that level of like anonymity or you know being able to kind of hide from them now I have to you know face the same people that are sending me these things um, and I know so and I've spoken to many other Jewish students and they all say the same they're the common the consensus is we are scared for our lives. Um, we're scared for our physical safety. No Jewish student should have to feel that way going back to school. Yeah. Um, I want to, so I, I do want to stay on the challenges for just one more moment and then we will switch gears. Um, you know, we, we also recognize that there is vibrant Jewish life on campus and we want to celebrate that as well. Um, but just to, to stay on these challenges for one more moment. So um, we know some younger Jews have said that older generations today can't really understand what's going on uh, the charge, in the charged intersection of social media, popular culture, campus life, um, as it's so totally different than earlier times. This is the rhetoric that we hear. And I'm curious to hear, what do you think? And if there is such a gap, can it at all be bridged? Um, and maybe Michal, let's start with you there. Yeah, this is a really interesting conversation because I have a lot um, with just different people. And I think one of the biggest thing that Jewish students want um, older individuals to understand is when you try to help, don't come kind of talking down to us but come and like looking in like face to face and lifting us up because at the end of the day, we're the only ones that can understand what anti-Semitism on college campuses are, what it looks like. And when someone who's, you know, even five years removed from graduating college telling, you know, the Jewish community what to do, it feels very uh, like condescending and like not, um, doesn't really do anything. And so I think one of the biggest thing that you, one of the biggest ways um, anyone watching can help, can support Jewish students is to lift us up, um, you know, share our stories, however that may look like, um, talk about, um, you know, anti-Semitism on college campuses because it's a relatively new conversation that we're having. And so, you know, furthering that conversation and really asking questions to Jewish students about what they're facing and asking how they can help from like a genuine position is one of the best ways that anyone can help. Um, but I don't think that there is really a, ever like a place where someone that's not in college can understand what Jewish students are going through because we're the ones going through it. and it's hard sometimes to even explain that when you're not actively going through it. 
And, you know, I just, I, I want to pick up on something that you said about elevating the voices of committed, passionate Jewish students. And, and I just want to underscore EJC's commitment to raising the voices in platforms like this one and the other initiatives that we've done throughout this week and throughout this year. That's just so critical to hear from students directly. And I'm, I'm glad you raised that. Leanne. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we hear from some, this divide between younger and older generations. And um, do you feel like this divide exists? And if there is a gap, how it can be bridged at all? So I, I don't think the gap exists. I think it's the same um, historical tropes and anti-Semitism. Anti that exists for generations, it's just in a different form. Um, and because I'm on my phone all the time to do my classwork um, on my laptop and um, uh, submitting assignments, I'm on my phone, on my, on my laptop, I'm on social media all the time. So the same way they would have interacted in a classroom 50 years ago, uh, talking about Israel, that conversation is now on the phone. Um, so I don't think there's a gap. I do believe that uh, a vast majority of older Jewish Americans are on social media, they're on Facebook, and they see the type of anti-Semitism that spreads widely on the internet. Um, but I do think there is a different level to the accessibility of the anti-Semitism that younger Jews see on the web. Um, their classmates um, are much more highly skilled in uh, spreading information peer-to-peer um, -peer at, at, at a more efficient level um, and getting things around than an older generation where it would have to largely trend uh, for it to come up on their feed. Thank you. Um, so I, I want to switch gears now to the more to the proactive side of things. You're both inspiring examples of students who are making a difference. And so what I'm curious to hear is what have you found to be the most effective forms of advocacy and what role also does allyship play in that? Um, and maybe here, Leon, let's start with you. And I know you've done work in Atlanta, working to build bridges between the Black and Jewish community. So maybe you can speak about that as well as other forms of advocacy that you've seen to be effective. Yeah, so this winter um, I was working, I worked with the American Jewish Committee on a, a Black Jewish coalition with, um, with youth. And it was, it was really eye-opening. We got to get into deep conversations um, about the struggles in each community and how um, the knowledge that we can spread about the struggles that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis um, can empower us um, and can move us uh, forward together. Um, and another way that I use allyship to create better bonds in the Jewish community is uh, the vast majority of my friends are not Jewish. And just being myself, being a kid that they know is Jewish, that uh, does all the things they love to do, um, hangs out with them, and is just one of them, when those conversations come up and they have a question about Israel, that I'm someone they can trust that they can ask and they, they understand that the opinion that I share is informed and is to not just spread my opinion, but to benefit them. Yeah, I definitely relate to the second point that you made about allyship. A lot of my friends in college are not Jewish and they see me as, you know, authentically me. So whether I tell them, oh, I'm, you know, going to Shabbat dinner, I can't really hang out Friday night. So then they ask questions and then Judaism and like Jewish people aren't like this far off like people, but like they see someone celebrating Shabbat and that they can ask questions too. Um, and then being an Israeli, they also value my opinion on Israel um, and the conflict. Um, so I definitely like being an approachable person I think I am, uh, <laughs> but that's definitely something that, you know, just being me and like allowing people and giving space for non-Jews to ask questions, um, I found has been really useful um, in terms of forms of advocacy. I've been kind of in the space for about a year, a little bit more. And something that I've quickly come to realize is that we can't do it ourselves. 
um, I sometimes get in, get in over my head and think I can be the one to do it. Um, but fighting anti-Semitism alone is impossible. Um, you need to have that community of people to come together to you know effectively fight it. And not only that, I mean, you as a person, you know, your mental health comes first and fighting anti-Semitism can be really draining um, and really tiring. And so having that community of, you know, Jewish advocates and people that care about fighting anti-Semitism, you can go to them and, you know, talk about what you're feeling, talk about what you're seeing and come up with a game plan is really empowering and actually only serves your fight and only makes it a lot more powerful. Um, and so to anyone watching that, you know, it's kind of going off and think that they can fight anti-Semitism alone. I thought I could do that and I quickly came to realize that I couldn't. You need people in your circle to A, you know, make sure that you're okay and that you can lean on and really um, the more the merrier, I think. I mean, not I think, I know that, you know, being able to fall on, you know, people that you trust and that you love and that you care for when things are going tough can only serve you and your and the goal of fighting anti-Semitism. So Michal, I, I wanna pick up on that piece about not going at this alone. Um, you know, part of the, the reason this week we're doing this back to school campaign is because AJC um, is here to be a resource for students. And so, you know, I, I'd love to hear from you, what more can organizations like AJC do to assist you? You're on the front lines. How can we be a resource to you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one of the biggest things that AJC can do is really talk to students and ask, and not just say, this is what, you know, we're giving you, um, and this is how you should do things, but rather, what do you need? How can we better support you? Because something that I think a lot of people don't really understand is that every campus is different. Um, I mean, I, I go to American University in DC, and there are three major universities here, American University, George Washington University, and Georgetown. They're all in the same, I mean, DC is not like a city. They're all in DC. Um, but the things that they need are all so different because the campus climate is all different. Um, and so for AJC coming to the Jewish um, community and asking how can we help you is probably one of the most effective ways that AJC can really help students fight anti-Semitism on college campuses and then giving them the tools to do so. Thanks. And Leon, I, I want to pose the same question to you about how AJC can be a resource. And you know, you're an alumni of our Leaders for Tomorrow, our high school program. Um, so maybe if you can speak a little bit about your your lift Leaders for Tomorrow experience and also how you feel like AJC can, can be a resource to students like yourself. Yeah, so uh, I did lift class of 2019, 2020, um, and I've been on the Atlanta. Um, alumni advisory committee for the past two years. Um, it is something I look forward to every Sunday. Um, I love getting to see uh, peers just like me who care about uh, the issues I care about. And we really get to not just assist each other, but we get to challenge each other's opinions and really work through the tough conversations. Um, those have been some of my, my favorite times in high school. Um, because I don't get to interact with kids like that um, all day long. I go to a, a public charter school um, in the South and getting to be around kids like me and really work together, um, I love it. It is, it, I am, I'm really thankful for AJC that I found this opportunity because it's made me a better person. And, and I just wanna pick up on that. You know, I think it goes back to the idea of not going at this alone. And that's really a goal of the LIFT program. We have over a thousand alumni now across the country. And we hope that LIFT students like yourself will be resources for one another and come together to support each other on campus and, and with the work that you're doing. Um, Michal, I, I wanna go back to you. And I, I sort of wanna, I wanna ask you to kind of think retrospectively now, um, as a leader on campus today, what do you think was missing from your education pre-college? What do you wish you had known before you got to campus? Um, I know you, you actually talked about this a little bit in, in the letter you penned to your freshman self, but if you can share with our audience today. Yeah, so I 
grew up in a very Jewish bubble. I went to Jewish day school my whole life, or I was in Israel. So before coming to American, I wasn't really exposed to, you know, kind of the non-Jewish world because I had you know, my Jewish day school, my Israeli community back home and like my synagogue. And those were the three main places that I went to. Um, and so when I came to campus, all of a sudden I was the first Jew that my roommate met, um, or I was like kind of the first religious Jew that people met. They kind of just saw it on TV and were like, oh, like Hanukkah and Mazal Tov. And I was like, no, I mean, yes, but there's a lot more to that. Um, and so I quickly had to learn about like how to answer those questions, how to answer tough questions um, and learn a lot more about Jewish identity, um, like Jewish history, the conflict, especially. I mean, even as an Israeli, I never stop learning about the conflict because there's, it's, it's such a, you know, Israel's only 70 odd years old, but like, there's so much to learn. And so I'm constantly learning about, you know, who the Jewish people are, um, our history, um, the conflict, because I think knowledge is one of the best tools a student can have, not just in the classroom, but really diving deep outside of it. And so something that I wish that I had more an understanding of is Jewish identity. I came in thinking that it's just the religion and I soon quickly realized that there's so much more to that, right? It's not just the religion, it's a peoplehood. You know, we call ourselves Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel and you know, seeing that we're not just religion, but like a people and that we have um, a responsibility over one another that completely changed the way that I view, you know, who I am and my relation to other Jews. Or being in high school, I wish I was challenged more on, you know, Israel because I went to a very Zionist school. And so I, w I never had to, you know, question or, I never have to think twice about, yeah, like I'm pro-Israel um, and like Israel's, you know, you know, the homeland of the Jewish people, but I never had to, I was never challenged on that. And so being, being able for someone to challenge me on that and to ask me tough conversations and um, tough questions and for me to come up with an answer, I wish I had that because then I think my transition into college would have been a lot easier. So I, I want to pick up, you mentioned Jewish identity, and it, it sounds like both of you are really motivated by the strong, um, proud Jewish identities that you both hold. And I'm wondering, what recommendations do you have? How can, how can we, and by we, I mean collectively the American Jewish community, help, help others, help your peers to, um, to de develop and strengthen Jewish identity, strong Jewish identities, like, like the two that you have and that, that motivate you to be a Jewish advocate? And, uh, Leon, we can start with you. Yeah, I think it's important for American Jews to be themselves, uh, to not hide themselves in the workplace or uh, forget their Jewish identity once they finish religious day school, um, to raise their kids to be uh, Jews and to vote um, for Jewish issues, to support your community and um, be aware of what's going on in the political sphere um, and be somebody that your non-Jewish colleagues can reach out to um, and that they can trust, uh, that you will give them an informed, fair position on Israel. Yeah, I would say I, there's this new phenomenon, phenomenon that I'm seeing on, especially online with the younger uh, Jewish people that we often relate our Judaism to anti-Semites. And I don't like, I hear the story a lot. Oh, I was called this. And then I became, you know, a proud Jew. Our Jewish identity has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. We should not base our Jewish identity based on those that want to destroy us. And so learning about a Jewish identity not in relation to anti-Semitism. Anti so whether that means learning about, you know, your family history. When I learned more about, 
you know, my, my family name, Cohen, my great grandfather during the Holocaust changed it to Wolf because his first name was Ev, which is Wolf in Hebrew. And then my dad changed it back to Cohen. Um, and so that gave me so much pride in my last name because I'm, you know, they tried to, you know, knock us down and here we are like that resilience. I take pride in that. Um, or whether that's learning about, you know, a food that you eat every Shabbat dinner um, or your name or where you, I already said where you come from, but like your family history, um, your community, how you got to where you are today, learning those bits and pieces of who you are as a Jewish person that does, has nothing to do with anti-Semitism today is really empowering. Um, learning about the hope of the Jewish people and how we value life. That gives me a lot of Jewish pride. And I try, when I talk to different students, I try, when I explain that, they too, they're like, wait, we are so much more than being called, you know, X, Y, and Z on the quad or being known as the Jewish kid, but knowing that you're part of something so much greater than yourself is so, so empowering. And it's so, it's really something that makes you know, Jews and, and Judaism, like really special. And, you know, I really appreciate it in both of your answers to this question, but also to the question throughout how you um, weave in your personal narratives. And I think that's such an important piece of, it seems like what's driving you, but also um, in your approach to advocacy, it's about people to people and our, our personal stories and narratives, so important. Um, so I have one more question that I'm gonna pose to you and then we'll open it up to audience Q&A. So my final question for you, and here I want to look on the positive side of things. Um, as you head back to school this fall, what makes you hopeful about the year ahead? And here, let's start with Michal. So I'm already on campus. It's my first week, which is pretty wild because it's my last semester. I'm, I think the Jewish community had a wake up call over the summer where where we can't be comfortable anymore. And something that I'm seeing a lot on campus is instead of as I said before, kind of complaining and doing nothing and hiding, the Jewish community actually came out and is even louder and prouder and more visible. And that to me is really exciting because well, not only that, but we have a lot more Israeli students this year. And so I hear Hebrew on the quad um, and that, and being more proud and for the Jewish community on my campus, and I think the campus is not just even nationwide, but globally, deciding to become more proud and more visible is something that's really exciting. Um, I mean, it you know sucks that we had to, that there's a rise in anti-Semitism, but, and that's kind of what drove us to become louder, but we had the option to retreat. We had the option to, you know, hide in the shadows, but then we decided to reject that notion and to become, be more ourselves. And I think that's really exciting because you know, can't, you know, if they're gonna knock us down for being Jewish, might as well go down being proud. Yeah. yeah. And um, something I'm hopeful looking forward to this school year, I am five weeks into my senior year in high school. Um, the awakening of the social conversation in America um, and how that trickles down into the Jewish community. Um, I'm, it makes me hopeful that people don't just see us, oh, it's the Jews, oh, blah, 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 and they don't really pay any attention to us. Um, as the FBI uh, hate crime statistics came out yesterday, um, it has not changed. Uh, Jews are 2% of the population and 58% of the hate crimes are committed against us. And that people need to be aware of the issues that we face in our community and that we are not uh, just looked over as, oh, it's the Jews and nothing else. That sentence needs to be followed. Um, and I hope that that social awakening drives that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both. And um, before we go to audience Q&A, you know, I just, I wanna just remind everyone AJC is a 501c3 organization and um, we're, we're an ardently nonpartisan organization, um, but thank you both for, for your input here. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to Claire for audience Q&A. Thank you, Joanna. 
So our first question comes from Carol Friedman in Boston, and it's for Michal. What's the biggest anti-Semitic threat facing Jewish students on campus? Is it anti-Semitism on the left, on the right? Is it something else? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it honestly is from everywhere. Um, I think the second that we politicize anti-Semitism, I mean, we can't effectively fight it, um, but especially, it really depends on the campus. Um, you know, Jewish students go to campuses, you know, in blue states, red states, purple states, um, and every campus looks a little bit different. So I've spoken to some students where, you know, the anti-Semitism that they face comes a lot more from the right, and then other students that, you know, the anti-Semitism that they face comes more from the left. They're both anti-Semitism at the end of the day, whether it's from the right or the left. And the second that we only focus on one, we, we lost it. We lost, like, we lost the fight. And so I think we should shift the conversation, not from, oh, where is it coming from, but view all anti-Semitism as anti-Semitism and, you know, deal with it in the way that they should. Um, but yeah, it's really from everywhere. It's not one you know, side or, or the other. Thank you. Our next question is from Michael Horn in Arlington, Virginia, and it's for you, Leon. How are you approaching the college search process? Are you thinking about applying to only schools with Jewish populations with or with little to no history of BDS? Um, I have actually considered uh, the BDS rhetoric on campus, um, but I, I don't shy away from those challenging environments. Um, I, grow up, I grew up in a, a public school from the South. Um, I feel like there's no reason to back down. I know who I am. Um, I'm confident in my abilities uh, to perform in any environment. And I, I do take note of it, um, like campuses that have passed um, BDS legislation like uh, Berkeley and Michigan, but those, those does not hesitate me um, from applying to those schools because I know there are uh, Jewish populations on campus. And um, I believe that I can, um, I can overcome those challenges. Our next question comes from Lisa Florence in Houston. It's for both of you. Um, where do you draw your strength from? What motivates you to be so involved in this kind of work? Sorry. Michal, we'll start with you. Yeah, so a lot of it, it's, it's really funny actually, because when I came to college, I said, no, I'm done being that Jewish kid. Like I wanna be my own, I wanna be like everyone else. Um, and <laughs> it's just funny looking back, <laughs> With the name Michal Cohen, there's no way I could have, you know, escaped it. But for me, learn about, again, where I come from and something that I've realized, you know, recently, like my family did not fight being proud, like they were proud Jews through and through, you know, all my ancestors. And I quickly came to realize how shameful that would be for me to end that that long line of uh, history of proud Jews and proud Jewish women. And as I started learning about the acts of resilience that my family um, you know, did, whether it was hiding from Nazis or you know, my dad changing, you know, changing back um, you know, our last name to Cohen, or you know, the constant moves that my family had to do from one country to the next to escape anti-Semitism. Um, learning about that has really empowered me and I draw my strength from them. And I think for every other you know, Jew who, you know, like me, like Freshman Michal, who is kind of rejecting that identity, learn about where your family comes from, learn about you know, how you ended up here today and it's really really empowering um, and that just gives you this more like sense of Jewish identity and Jewish pride. Yeah so I think my courage comes from um, my conversations at the dinner table um, around the religious holidays when I moved from the kids table to the adult <laughs> table um, and I started listening and, and having my input heard 
in social and political conversations with my uh, parents, aunts, uncles, and my grandparents, um, and hearing the stories of my family, like Nicole said, uh, learning that my family fought in the Haganah, um, and that resilience of my Jewish identity uh, makes me who I am, and that uh, they couldn't give up in their situation, um, and neither can I, because I have to fight for who I am, um, who my kids, um, for the battles my kids are going to have to fight, and the battles that my grandparents have already fought. Thank you. Our next question is coming actually from several people on Zoom. How can Jewish groups on campus encourage new students who may be afraid um, to be more involved with Israel or Jewish advocacy? And Michal, we'll start with you. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that you know we can do or Jewish groups can do is getting to know these students on a one-to-one -one, uh, you know, basis. Every student, you know, comes from sort of different background and understanding who they are as a person can help, you know, these Jewish groups better tailor what they're doing to these students. So I speak to a lot of students on my college campus who, you know, DM me and they say, I love your content. I'm just really scared to post it on my story because I've been, you know, harassed in the past on campus. And so I never come at them and you know bash them for it, but I come from a place of understanding and really have those conversations of what they're feeling, what they're going through, how I can better assist them. And through that kind of bring them into the con like into this group of you know Jewish advocates on campus. And so I'm, my biggest tip is not to you know kind of impose on these Jewish students not to you know put them down for feeling scared but to understand that what they're feeling is to reassure them that what they're feeling is valid and how you know as someone who's very proud how I can better assist them and you know break that down and hopefully them becoming proud and loud I mean I was not who I am today when I came into college it took me a process and finding your Jewish pride is not you know not I don't think anyone's born with it I think it is very much a journey of discovering that and making it your own and so if we can help other Jewish students go through, you know go on that journey and and find their Jewish pride I think that's one of the best things that we can do on on campus. Uh, yeah, I could I couldn't agree more. I um, as the president of my Jewish student union at my high school. Um, I'm working through those same issues about how kids in my, how the Jews in my school, how they want to be Jewish in our environment. Um, and that it's okay to be different and uh, participate in this organization after school. You're allowed to be who you are on our school. That's the way it should be. And um, that you're allowed to um, exhibit your Jewish traits in any way you want. You don't have to post on social media or go to synagogue. Um, it can be the little things, the things that are important to you, uh, the way you are Jewish, the way you want to be. Our next question comes from Sam Zimmerman in Portland, Oregon. It's for both of you. What's different about being back in person? Are things much different than they were before the pandemic, especially with um, regards to your involvement with student activities? And Leon, let's start with you. Yeah, so it, it's totally different. Um, I never realized how much I missed school until it went virtual. And uh, I've been very happy to be back in person. Um, and it has changed the dynamic completely. Um, my classes online were very little dialogue, uh, no face-to-face, -face, and you weren't able to pick up on those small things, those conversation points uh, throughout the discussions and the lectures. Um, but in person, there's that human element. Um, and it is, it is great. You get to have those alternative conversations throughout the lessons, the lectures throughout the day, uh, talking to my peers. And um, overall, it, it's, it's been great. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I, <laughs> it's very nice to be back on campus and seeing other faces and not just a black screen. <laughs> um, but no, I agree because because I am very Israeli people, it's not like this far off kind of place or people, but, oh, wait, like 
these are actual people. And so in that sense, I'm able to humanize Israelis. And, and I think that it's completely changed the game, you know, for good and for, you know, for the better and for the worse, because on the one hand, I do get stares <laughs> on campus. But on the other hand, I get people to ask me questions or um, I get to kind of act as this humanized Israeli and like, oh my God, she's real uh, or they're real. And so overall, I'm really excited. Um, definitely a little bit nerve wracking, but because the Jewish community has come together in a way that's really inspiring, I'm really, yeah, I'm excited for the semester ahead. Our next question comes um, again from many people on Zoom. What would you say to non-Jews who are looking to be a real ally for the Jews on campus? And Michal, we'll start with you. Well, first of all, I would say thank you because it's sad to say that it's very rare. I mean, for me, I've lost a lot of my non-Jewish friends um, who just didn't want to, you know, for me, as a very proud Israeli or and Jew, they were like, no. So at first I would say thank you because it's very rare. But one of the biggest things that I would tell them or ask them to do is just to educate themselves. The Jewish people are probably one of the most misrepresented people. And so just beginning to understand who we are is like 50% of the way. And the other 50% is just ask questions. Um, well, I guess that is with educating, but like interacting and like asking genuine questions um, and surround, like not surrounding yourself with Jews, because that's a little bit strange, but like, you know, either you know, go your hello and say to the director, say, I have questions. Um, can I talk to a Jewish student? And just getting to know us a lot more on a deeper level is like, that's really all we ask for. And I think especially calling out anti-Semitism in your circles, as mentioned before, we're only 2% of you know, the population in the US. There are a lot more anti-Semites than there are Jews. And so we need as, much, as many people as possible to call out anti-Semitism, whether that's holding you know, your classmates, colleagues, uh, family members accountable for you know, the anti-Semitism that they spew, um, whether on it, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Um, but the two biggest things really is education and um, like calling it out, calling out anti-Semitism in your circles. I, I, I agree as well. I think um, staying informed with the issues and not as much holding a position, but being aware of both sides um, and then the point of social acceptability, um, if you wouldn't let racism and sexism, uh, those ideas be spread rampantly in your social circles, anti-Semitism should go along with that. Um, that is um, sort of a baseline where you start where I don't want to be around people uh, that think this way um, and that don't think that uh, my religion is real or any of the other crazy stuff they believe um, and that to start there um, and just to to stay a part of the conversation uh, to not lose the Jews um, and your political thought or your social thought uh, but to keep us in the back of your head at all times that these are the issues that uh, the Jews deal with and what can I do um, to help them as a group. And our last question before I turn it back to you, Joanna, is for those who are watching who are getting ready for their school years, what's one piece of advice you'd give to Jewish students heading to college or to, back to high school this fall? Or perhaps, perhaps, Michal, is there advice you want to give Leon as he gets ready to apply for school? <laughs> sure. So I'll, I guess my answer will be twofold. So for Jewish students returning to campus, um, Find a community like right away, whether, you know, going to the involvement fair and seeking out Chabad, Halal, um, the, you know, pro-Israel groups on campus and build that community. Yes, it's important to have, you know, a diversity of friends, but having that 
community that you can go to when things get tough um, or you're faced with an anti-Semitic incident, which will probably happen. Um, that's one of the best, you know, pieces of advice that I could give. And I found my community pretty late, probably when I joined Jewish on campus. My colleagues are not just my colleagues, but they're like my family. Um, anything that I go through, they know and they offer advice because they are going through the same thing. And so having a community of friends, of Jewish friends who are going through the same things as you, it can be really empowering um, and just really like uplifting as well. And then early on, what I would say, one, I wouldn't let BDS or anything like that, as you said, get in the way of your college decision. Because I think we're at this point where every single school is facing it. And something that I've seen is the Jewish community at universities that are facing the most like BDS or like anti-Semitic incidents are the strongest communities um could you kind of have like the, those two forces um but and then when you do go again finding that community but um college is great <laughs> i i it's a place honestly like you think you're like this proud like jew and like really certain and that will only grow once you get to university because you're faced with so many, so many more challenges than like high school, um, which can be really tough at times, but it's also really, really, really empowering. Um, and yeah, good luck. Like truly it's annoying and it's hard, but it's really, really fun. Thank you. I, um, the one thing I would add for any kids uh, entering high school or entering middle school, uh, that are all on the call just just be you it's okay to be you it's okay to be Jewish it's okay to tell your teacher why you're not going to be on school on Tuesday um and just be you be who you are and be proud of it uh Leanna I think that's the perfect note to end on um so I just want to say thank you thank you Leon thank you Michal for joining us today sharing your experiences thank you for your passion your leadership your bravery you're an inspiration um, I want to make, I want to reaffirm to the two of you and to your peers, AJC's commitment to supporting students and to being a resource for students. And I think especially as we look ahead to the Jewish New Year, um, you are such an incredible reminder to us all that the Jewish future is really bright. So thank you, Shana Tova, wishing everyone a, a happy, sweet, healthy New Year. And Claire, I'll turn it back to you to close us out. Thank you both for being with us today. Um, in addition to the, all the questions we've received, we also got a ton of messages. Thank you both for your strength, authenticity, and your work to make life better for Jews on campus. For more resources for students heading back to campus this fall, please visit ajc.org slash campus library. To get involved with AJC's advocacy on campus, email us at campus at ajc.org. And don't miss this week's AJC People of the Pod episode, featuring guest host, Maggie Wishagrad fredman director of AJC's Alexander Young Leadership Department, as she discusses the difficult realities and the wealth of opportunities awaiting American Jews on campus. You can check out this episode and more at ajc.org slash people of the pod, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thank you again. Bye-bye.